guys and welcome back to Project Z Garage. My name is Ansar. I'm here with my brother Al and Zeus who is getting scratched. Uh, today we're going to continue working on the ML350 and on today's episode we are going to be doing the brakes. Well the front brakes. But before we even touch the front brakes and start changing anything out we are going to bleed the system. Um, not only does bleeding get air out it also allows us to get rid of some of the old brake fluid at each uh, caliper because you know the brake fluid pretty much stays where the caliper is and it gets a ton of heat cycles so that doesn't really get changed out and it's also a good idea especially when you're doing brakes to push that old brake fluid out so you can crack the uh, bleeder valves push some of that old brake fluid out and then uh, you know it stops any any uh, uh, debris or contamination in the in the brake fluid to come out there instead of pushing it back through the ABS system or you know the other components of the car so we picked up some Mercedes genuine brake fluid um, this is dot four plus uh, let's see if there is a code for this so I'm not sure if that's the part code but there you go but you can see this we got two liters of this we're gonna try to bleed out I think we're gonna try to almost change out most of the fluid in the system I mean the car has 60,000 miles on it or close to it and it's just a good idea to do a full flush get some new brake fluid in there especially with um, now that we're doing pads rotors and the whole nine yards it'll definitely I think uh, benefit the car at this point what do you think Al? So we have this uh, brake bleeder I picked up from Harbor Freight. Hopefully, it can. It's up to the task. We did use this in one of my other episodes to, to uh, vacuum out some of the fluid in the cylinders when we were cleaning the Audi. We were doing the carb clean, so this definitely helped with uh, pulling out that fluid. Uh, so before we start, just so you guys know, it is a size 12. 11. Oh, a size 11 millimeter. It's an 11 millimeter on the brake bleeder screws on this 2010 ML350. So we're gonna start from the furthest from the brake fluid reservoir, which would be the passenger rear. But first thing you're gonna do is top off the, the brake fluid inside the brake fluid. Okay. All right. So as my brother says, we're gonna open up this brake fluid container and we're gonna fill it up because we are going to bleed some out. We don't want to over, when we're done, we're going to make sure that we're just right where the max line is after the brakes and everything are done. But for now, let's fill it up a little extra so that when we bleed it, we don't go too low. Because the last thing we want to do is introduce air into the system because that will give you a spongy pedal and can cause other problems in your braking. color is that fluid? It's got a light color to it. Okay. Guys, go ahead out. All right, we got the lines already connected to the bleeder. So what we're gonna do is gonna go over this like that and we're ready to open that up. I'm gonna now connect up the air compressor. I open this. It's drawing the fluid out. I can see it moving along. going to tighten this back up and we're going to check our, our reservoir. reservoir and see that it still has fluid we do not want to dry that reservoir out otherwise we got to bleed the master again all right guys we just finished bleeding the whole system my brother wanted to flush flush it out 
because it is at 60,000 miles and I believe in the maintenance schedule they say you should get the brakes flushed out they, they were pretty clean but we still threw another bottle bottle and a half through it just to make sure there's no moisture or anything that you can't really detect from looking at the color so that's all done and it's really hot today but we're getting it done that's done but I want to show you guys the upgrades we're going to be doing to the front the front brakes uh, in this video now check these out So we went with the uh, drilled, no slotted, just drilled, kind of like an OEM plus look. I know some of the performance models uh, came with drilled uh, rotors, maybe not as many holes as this, but definitely uh, they look really nice. They're, co they're coated. <laughs> definitely not as many holes as that. <laughs> yeah, you know, they were, were spread out a little further, but I think this is fine for what we have. And we're, we're going to pair this with the uh, Brembo brake pads. Now these are not the, the I don't, these are like the semi-metallic so so um they're not the fully ceramic the fully ceramic are a little more uh kind to the rotors they're not as ab abrasive but these are actually a little more aggressive uh they will bite more so you will see some some uh uh lines in the rotors from these but just for the fact that it has that semi-metallic uh compound so it really digs into the metal and, and brings this car down and that's what we wanted i wanted a, a kind of a upgrade to what was stock on the car and i think this this will do it now the rotors we got from uh i think it was brake performance uh, let me look at the box here uh haven't used them before yeah so it's brake performance uh, do they have anything in there okay guys so the rotors are from brake performance uh <clears throat> You know, I'll put a link below. First time using them. Uh, the price is pretty good. From what the spec says, it's pretty much uh, the casting and everything is like an OEM casting. Uh, it says it has, it has. Uh, let's see, let's lift one of these up. You know, you have all the fins in there, just like an OEM one. Uh, the spacing is, it's very sub, you know, the weight is very good. It's not a light piece. So I'm excited to see how well these will perform. They look really good. It has the coating so it'll stop some rust. And we have the semi-metallic brake pads from Brembo. Let me give you guys the part number if I can find it. Here we go. Hopefully you guys can see that. But let's see what comes in it. So we have our brake pads. There's the backing plates. A lot of instructions. Well, we'll look at that later. You know, we don't need to look at that now. But definitely a lot thicker than right now what we have. I'm excited to see how well these will perform over the uh, I believe that we used fully ceramic on the front pads yeah. okay. That's what we had on here now And if you can see it, it's kind of thin You know what, let me get my light out so you guys can see it a little better We're, We definitely hit the uh, wear We hit the low pad sensor already But as you can see, even with the low pad sensor uh, going off We still have a decent amount of brakes So you have enough time to get it to a shop if you need to or or do it yourself um but they still are good we haven't got to the chamfer part yet so that's good news as you can see our in the last couple of videos that we did we have our bilstein b6 shocks on i'll link that in the description below if you guys are interested on how we did that uh al right now is taking the cap off of the bolts that hold the caliper okay so this is the cap. Um, you have one top, one and bottom. All right, guys. So this is a 2010 ML350 with the V6. Now the carrier bolts for the caliper are a nine millimeter hex uh, bolt or carrier that you need to use. And then the caliper bracket is a 21 millimeter. 21 millimeter. Yeah. So we're using a 21 millimeter to loosen that. 
Now first we're gonna remove this, uh, I guess it's like an anti-rattle. Yeah. Or, or what do they call it? Is it, or is it called like a knockback spring? It might be an anti-rattle spring, but we have to remove oh, that first. Got a little... All right guys, like I was saying, once you remove the two nine millimeter uh, carrier bolts from the back, you might need to press the caliper in a little bit to release uh, some, some of the pressure from the pads holding on. And it should come out just like that. And now Al's removing it, but you can't really see it. Hold on, let me get the light. So the pad on the inside has that clip and the teeth that you have to pull out. Ooh, it's a lot of smoke. Don't breathe that in. Something holding That's that ceramic. Thing? Yeah. They don't look horrible. They still had a... Yeah, but the sensor some. went off, so we're kind of screwed. Yeah. What's so, holding it there? Oh, the last one. Yeah. So this one bent up a little bit, but that's how that's these fine. fit That's fine. We have new ones, so yeah. we don't care. These it's don't look horrible. Not even up to the chamfer yet, so you did, it had more time on it, but... It, well, you know what? It could be that side might be wear, wearing a little bit. You know uh, what's... Yeah, you know what you're just talking about? The other side has a sensor. Only one side has yeah, a sensor. Yeah, on the front, the passenger side has the sensor, but just shows you. Uh, we might need to push these these uh caliber pistons in a little bit yeah. um they still look like they're out a little yeah, too far yeah you can far. see the rubber all here I yeah think. we still might have to push them in a little bit so we can get the new pads in because they are a lot thicker uh one way you could you could either get a tool that compresses the caliper or you could just take the one of the old uh pads and put it in there and then just use a g clamp or a c clamp to uh push it in slowly now be careful that if you uh, are are filling up the brake fluid reservoir, you know, as you're driving, that it is a possibility that when you push these pistons in, you can overflow the the uh, the uh, brake reservoir. So be very careful. Um, we already bled it. I kept it a little lower just so because I knew we were gonna do this. So we will have to refill again and top up once we're done. We're also going to take a quick look at these sliders and make sure they function correctly because a lot of times that's what happens when one side is working better than the other is the sliders are getting seized up. So we might take them out and grease them. Yep. And make uh, sure you're using brake grease. And another good idea to do is you should never let these calipers hang uh, by the brake line. So you should get yourself one of these bungee cords, wrap it around or, or hook it on the suspension and then wrap it around the caliper Son of a bitch. it doesn't fit that way just wrap it around it okay. and hook it on the yeah and just hook it on there you go that's fine there you go yeah this way you don't put any tension on the lines. brake lines now we need to get the brake caliper mount off which was a 21 millimeter the big bar? Uh, should... now we got a breaker bar with a 21 millimeter on and now it's going to try to break loose this caliper yeah that's what's it bracket all right nice it needs a little these things are on pretty tight so you got to be careful did i snap it uh, i think you just fell off of it okay Funny thing is, I even got the wheel turned out. Yeah, but the wheel's turning back the other way when you do it. There you there go. There you go. Yeah, it snapped. It's not loose. Broke loose. That's broke loose. I'm I don't sorry. Like, I don't like the, the term snap. All right, broke snap. <laughs> Whichever one you like. Give me the air compressor. I can't do this by hand. All right, so we're going to zip that off and then we'll come back to getting the uh, rotor off. All right, so we got the caliper bracket off. That's the T21. Now you're going to have to remove the uh rotor retainer screw sure why not it's a t30 uh torx so al is going to remove that now now this could be a real pain to come out because it, it could be rusted in so we usually put a little bit of anti-seize on it to stop it from uh you know rusting in space and being very difficult to come out it's just to hold the rotor on for yeah. a hot second and oh it had loctite on and it. it did have some loctite on it so Okay. Whatever. All right. I don't. I think it just needed some anti-seize. It needed some okay. anti-seize, but whoever did it from the dealer put some Loctite on it. So you might have to hit it with a little bit of heat to get it off, because you don't want to round that out, because it will make it ten times harder to come out. So we have that off. 
So now it should come out, but it might be a little rusty. Well, you know what? It's, I think, around the hub. You got some rust around the hub? Maybe. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just take a, what is that, like a five pound hammer and just nail it around. Yeah, slowly tap it as you move, turn it around. Cause... So we're gonna slowly hit and tap on it. And there we go. Look at that. Oh my Look God. at that. It's freaking heavy. As you can see, uh, it's nice and smooth here. So we know that the pad was wearing good on this. It does have a lip, so I think it was about time to change it. Now, another important thing is to clean these hubs. Every time you do a rotor change, you have to clean these hubs very thoroughly because this can bring uh, vibrations in your steering while you're driving if, this, if the new rotor doesn't sit perfectly uh, flat on the surface. We also, once we clean this up, we like to put a very, very tiny bit of anti-seize just around where the hub is so we won't have this issue with taking off the rotor when we need to in the future. Let's hit it with some brake fluid, some brake cleaner, and then scrub it some more. That's brand new, so it should. Yeah. So we're gonna hit that again, clean everything up. Always clean everything. It's always good to do because it allows you to see if there's any problems and leaks and things like that. So we're gonna hit it with the wire brush again, really good. Clean it up really nice. And then we'll offer up the new rotor to it and make sure everything fits properly. All right, guys. So we, as you can see, we just put a tad bit on. We don't put a lot on this, but you know, everyone has their opinion on how much you should put. I think every a little bit always helps. Now we have to just find the right orientation, which I think Al's got. And what we'll do is just to hold it in place, we're gonna hit the set screw. Are we gonna put some Loctite back on this? I say just put it in like that, cause we did put a little bit of uh, anti-seize in there anyway. So it'll, it'll draw in. Remember, this thing is just supposed to be just to hand hold it tight. On. Yeah, it's just so the rotor doesn't fall off when you're doing it. There you go. Woo. Nice. Look at that. That looks good. Yeah, always wipe off both sides of the yeah, the surface to. where the brake pad's gonna touch because you don't want any grease or anything on there. All right, guys. So Al has the new rotor on, but I think we came into an issue because now that's the the uh, old brake caliper uh, mount, and the issue we're facing can't reach is that. It won't reach the bolts behind it let's see if you can no you're not going to see it that well but okay it's it's uh it's jamming it's, too it's small. jamming which means this rotor that i thought this car so this is a 350 millimeter rotor that i thought this ml 350 came with actually needs the 330 millimeter rotor so now we have a little bit of an issue now this is a mistake I made because I should have looked into it a little more. I thought we had the bigger the bigger rotor uh, because I, I read somewhere is that if you if it came with 19 inch wheels, it would have the bigger uh, rotor. Uh, but we are wrong. Now, hopefully you guys learn from this and don't make the same mistake I did. So most than, more than likely, most of these ML 350s, unless it has the sport package, if you know that if it came with a sport package. Uh, run the 330 millimeter rotor not the 350 millimeter rotor um, another way of telling if you have the smaller rotors is if you look at your rare rotors and if it's a single uh what would you call it if it's not ventilated meaning that it only has one piece of metal it doesn't have the space between it uh where the fins are like this so if the rear doesn't look like that or if this makes this will be easier to understand if the rear is like this it's only one piece of metal it's not two together uh you more than likely have the 330 millimeter brake uh rotors not the 350. the 350 comes with ventilated rear rotors like this on the front it's similar to the the same design where it's two together with the uh ventilation holes in between so hopefully you guys learned but you know what let's complete this video and show you guys how to do 
the brake install and I have an idea to maybe re reuse these maybe we'll come up with a better idea uh, but let's see I might be able to return them uh, but I have an idea that I want to try out so we might do that in a future video just so that we can run these rotors but for now we're gonna put back on the stock front rotor and do the the uh, brake pads and show you guys how to install the brake pads and tighten everything up and that'll pretty much conclude what you need to do to get the front brakes done on a 2010 ML350 and just to show you the difference this is the 330 millimeter and that's the 350 millimeter uh, rotors. Just so you guys can see that it is about an inch bigger than the, than the uh, 330 millimeter ones. So you definitely can tell right now when you put them side by side how much bigger they are. <sighs> so guys. What you, what you would do is if you're changing your rotors out, you're going to be putting on your new rotors. Make sure that they are either the 330 or 350 millimeter rotors. Our, our ML350 here came with 330 millimeter rotors. And we're just going to reuse this just to mock it up and show you guys the correct way to uh, finish off your brake job. Now, there's two little uh, posts that come out of the holes that you would line up. And that's going to center, not center, but uh, position your rotor in the right location to put your set screw and then where all your lug nuts are screwing in. They're also staggered so there's only one way for this to fit on. Yep. So you can kind of see them in there. You have one here and one here and that's what that screws on to. And then Al's going to put on the the caliper bracket bracket right now. So, yes, so they're 21 millimeter bolts holding on the bracket for the caliper. So we're going to tighten that up. And then after that, we're going to install the new brake pads and reinstall the caliper. All right, guys. So here we go. We have the calipers here and now we're going to install the pads. Uh, normally what we would do here uh, is the inside pad we're, in we're going to install on the caliper and that which is on the piston side because those have to get pushed in. And then on the outside, we're going to put that that brake pad on this side of the bracket and then slide the uh, caliper over onto it. So let me bring the light up so you guys can see. So you see there's these little tabs in the back that you have to push into the cylinder of the uh, of the uh, caliper. So it takes a little bit of maneuvering. You might have to squeeze it too with your fingers as you push them in. God, they're tight. Yeah, you guys, you got it's gonna take a little bit, but there you go. We got one side in, the other side in. There we go. And now that side, we're gonna put on the caliper bracket side. Really? I think so. No. I don't think so. I think I could slide it on the way it is. Okay. If you could slide it on the way it is, then go right ahead. I think it would have been easier to put it on, but hey. Okay, that's it. And then I guess gotta screw this in. Okay. Now you gotta screw in the caliper sliders. Yep. Right, that's what that it's called, correct. caliper sliders. Yep. On this car, it's a nine millimeter Allen head that that uh, screws this in. So, as always, make sure your calipers, uh, the sliders, are sliding nice and smooth. You could take them out. There's a special grease for them, and that way you know you're going to have a nice even pull on both sides of the car once you do it. guys so my brother tightened up the caliper to the caliper bracket now we need to put in the retainer spring for the caliper so what you're going to do is get the bottom part in prop uh, where it needs to go in so you got to kind of angle it in and then once he's holding that what i'm going to do is Wait, wait, stop. Hold on a second. Let me just get this a little bit more. Yeah, I don't think it's hooked in yet. There, there you go. go. Now, it's hooked it. now in. you can grab the top. So now I'm going to grab the top and then we're going to lift this up and over and then I'm going to push it in and then slide that's it up it. and that's it. A lot easier when you know what you're doing at this point. So it took a little of fiddling before we figured it out. But it feels good. It's strong and that pretty much concludes the install of a rotor and your pads. Now, remember again guys, I ordered the wrong rotor. 
Um, I've got the 350 millimeter instead of the 330, so this is why I'm reusing the old ones just to show you how to how to actually do it. Um, I don't. My plan is to either return them to get the right size, but I do want to try one other thing that I'll cover in another video. But pretty much, this is what you would do, and then from here, you're gonna bed them in. Once you finish all your brakes, you're gonna bed them in. Know that when you first press on the brake, it's gonna be a little bit of slack because you push those pistons in to fit those pads on. Yeah. So you want to be gentle with the brakes at first, make sure it's catching, check your level of your brake fluid, test it out, and do the bedding procedure like what you did before. Yeah, so once we do that, you have a good pedal feel before you take it out on the road, and then you're gonna bed it in, which is pretty much at, at some slow speeds, maybe you start off at 15, 20 miles an hour, come down, not to a complete stop, maybe down to five miles an hour. Then you're gonna raise your speed up, maybe, you know, 40 miles an hour, come, you do a couple of gradual stops while increasing your speed, just so you can get some transfer material from the brake pad to the rotor. That's what you wanna do, cause that's how you get that, that good brake feel and that, that uh, bite from the brake pad to the rotor. Um, guys, I think that's gonna cover it for today. I'm not gonna go too much more in depth because I do wanna test some stuff out before I go and call up uh, brake performance to get to see if I can get either a uh, trade for the for the three thirties or you know you know we, we like to make things work we'll we'll see so stay tuned if you haven't subscribed yet hit subscribe hit that bell so you know when new videos are coming out and in the next video we are gonna attack the rear brakes now again this is just showing you the front if you're doing the, just the front what I suggest if you're doing brakes do all of them at once just for peace of mind i know some people say that's not very cost effective because sometimes the rear the front wears faster than the rear or the rear race uh, uh uh wears faster than than the front but you know seeing that we're going to do a performance brake pad i like i'm just going to do it all the way around and uh you know upgrade the rotors at the same time so we might have the mercedes just uh floating here on all four wheels on four jack stands until we get that done all right, guys, so we'll catch you in the next video.